Yes, people, what's happening? And welcome to the Frankie Allen Podcast. You are here with your host, Will Cranny, alongside the UK's most feared comedian, Frankie Allen, for episode 24, Frank, 24 episodes in. Yeah. How are you feeling about hitting that landmark? Well, it's not a, not a landmark yet until we've hit 25, but nearing it. I didn't even realise we'd done so many. That's an awful lot, you know, 24. Fantastic, really. Enjoying it? Enjoying it. And, and the number of people that have watched it is phenomenal, isn't it? Everybody I speak to, um, everyone that approaches me, they've all watched the podcasts. I know you think a lot of people get mixed up with the vlog and the podcast. I think a lot of people watch them. Yeah, it's mad. So let us know in the comments or in the descriptions. Everyone's always saying, fucking hell, I'm always watching you and your alpha that on the podcast. I'm always watching you on yeah. the podcast. And I always go, nah, they're not talking about podcasts. They're talking about vlogs. No, a lot of them are watching the podcast. Okay. It's weird because we don't set out to make them funny or interesting. We're just talking. Kind of like, I don't know what it is. People just like watching them. Okay. Well, you were watching them back last night. Well, I was you? watching them. And they, to be honest with you, because some of them are a few weeks old and watching them <laughs> yeah. from a kind of like, uh, from a stranger's point of view, because you can't even remember what you've said yourself. I couldn't remember what I'd said or what can't remember what you said. Yeah. And watching them, they are very interesting. Nice one. So look, yeah. before we start this, if you're watching on YouTube, get yourself subscribed. Give us a big thumb up. And if you're watching it on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever, give us a big five star of you. Get it shared on your socials. That's that out of the way. Frank, you have had the most unluckiest week that, you could imagine. Let's talk a little bit well, about it. Let me just it. tell you something else which has just happened to me within <laughs> like half an hour ago, Go which ahead. is fucking horrible. Do I know this? No. Go on. I was a bit fed up today, so I came down here early. Now, where the studio is, this part of town, I won't mention the name of the street, but the next road is, there's a couple of cafes, isn't there? And I met you in the cafe, you're sitting yeah. outside. Yeah. And this fucking cafe, I can't remember what it's called or whatever, I don't really want to mention it. But it's a bit of a kind of like student vibe, a little bit snobby for me. And they're all sitting outside and uh, sitting on these uh, kind of like vegetarian menu and all that thing and woke <laughs> and all that. And this girl, this bird with like these fucking big Dr. Martins was sitting there talking to a fella and she was going, oh, yes, when I was at uni, I thought I'd study uh, European language. Oh, fuck it. And anyway, so I went in. Got a coffee. The coffee was okay. Yeah. But then after the coffee, I still had like an hour to kill, really. I didn't know what to do with myself, so I thought, I'll get another tea. So I ordered a tea. So I'm drinking this fucking tea. Mm. And I thought, what does this tea remind me of? Go on. What did it remind you of? It reminded me of stale milk. <laughs> they put stale milk in the tea. Yeah, I've got a theory I about just that. Went, you can fuck off. <laughs> And I never said anything to the girl. And she came and she was like, you know the way they are now because of the COVID, scrubbing the fucking table in front of me and all this. And oh, it's just this fucking bird with a fucking face hanging down by me tea. And, and, and the bird was horrible. And I went, what the fuck? I'm looking at a horrible bird. I'm tasting fucking stale tea. What's going on? Do you reckon it was real milk or do you reckon it was oat milk or something? It might have, yeah, that's the thing. It might have been, you know, like these pricks, like vegans and fucking like uh, Extinction Rebellion. Yeah. They don't want to drink real milk from a cow. They're like, they get milk or they squeeze a goat's tit into a fucking cup. And they go, yes, this is homogenic. Uh, this is homogenic milk. This is coming from um, a free range goat that was wanked off in a field in Greece. And yeah. I've just squoze its tits into the milk. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. The milk was fucking stale. So, right. <laughs> That's news to me. But you've had a you've had in my opinion, you've had a very unlucky week. Well, I, 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 I just reckon it's because you're going hundred mile an hour all the time. I don't know what's you seem going very, on. very chill today. But tell everyone about I mean, it ruined my night on Wednesday or whenever it was. Yeah. I mean, just well, how did it ruin your night? It ruined my night because I was trying to do some work and you fucking flapping around trying to get me to do all. Hang on a minute, Will. It was like an emergency situation. Right, tell people what the emergency is then. Terrible week, like a scene from the fucking Exorcist. I was going to phone up William Friedkin, who's, <laughs> who's directed the, the Exorcist. Who the fuck is William Friedkin? Directed the Exorcist to see if he'd come and fucking film me what went on, Go on. the other night. Just horrendous. So. Brand new phone, which you've got, two <laughs> yeah. weeks old. 
I got in the car the other day and had a pair of shorts on and I, there's a hole in the fucking pocket and I didn't realise. And as I get in the car, I can hear like a bang. I thought, what's that? So somebody's ringing me. So the number comes up on the Bluetooth. I'm talking, I think it was Dave Young, Dave, some sort of Dave. <laughs> so I thought, hang on a minute. So obviously it's not my phone that's fell out the car, but it was the phone. The phone had fell out the car and gone underneath one of the wheels. So I'm reversing here, this noise. I, I run over my own phone and squashed it all. Yeah. All like bits of glass hanging everywhere and everything. I thought, fucking hell. So then I just went to the shop and on the way back, I could hear a noise. And then this big sign came up, car overheating. I thought, oh my God, what's this? Parked in my driveway. There's all water pissing from underneath my car like a fucking waterfall. Yeah. I can't phone everyone because my phone went off. It wasn't working because I'd driven over the fucking car. Driven over the phone in my car, but the wheel had smashed the phone. So I've got no phone, no car. The car got, do not drive. The thing came up, car overheating. I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? I thought the only chance is to get up to Crosby to see you because you'd be able to phone up on your phone. Maybe the phone people, maybe, you know, the kind of like uh, BMW, whoever it is that's got me car, they can come out and have a look at it and try and fix it. So it was just a fucking nightmare. So I filled the car with gallons of water, took water with me, and had to drive to Crosby stage by stage, stopping every mile or so to let the car cool down a little bit, fill it back with water. Then I got to your house, you got onto Apple, we got the phone going again. Thank God it's been okay. This morning, uh, yesterday morning, I should say, I've had a new glass put on it, you know, the kind of like new cover and whatever, so it's working okay. The only thing that doesn't work is doesn't camera doesn't work on it. Camera doesn't, doesn't work. BMW came, they took me car. And it's strange, really, because the fellow that came out from this BMW Connect, because it's a lease car, he came out and he had a look at it and he went, I know your voice. And I said, how do you know my voice? I recognise your voice. Then he said, are you Frankie Allen and all that? So it was great. Got in his car. Then he was phoning his mate up, who's a big fan of Frankie Allen. And I had to speak to his mate in uh, Preston. But BMW were great. He took the car off me. Give me this fucking Aya car. But it was the same car as what I've got. But I didn't know how to adjust the um, the <laughs> driver's seat. Yeah. So I'm only little. And I've got these little legs. So whoever the fuck had been driving the car before me, must have been like fucking John Cleese with huge, like, long legs. So I'm trying to drive the fucking car home like that. Like, with my feet barely touching the fucking pedals and nearly crashed. Got the car home. And I was glad last night that my car was ready and took it back. And uh, they'd done a lot of work on the car as well. They fixed the brakes, needed new brake pads, put a couple of new tyres on. So it didn't cost me anything. It's under guarantee, under warranty. But a bit of a nightmare, as anybody knows. If you've got no car and you've got no phone at the same time, fucking horrendous, isn't it? Well, you come down to ours, so my dad comes down to ours, right? And then in the eve, it, like I'm sitting there of an evening, he bursts in. Oh, my phone's not working, my phone's not working. And all that. I looked at the phone, the phone was just smashed to smithereens. Like, like the whole front of it was fucked, basically. And then he's like, and oh, now my car's not working as well. My car's not working. fucking hell. So I'm sitting there thinking, I was try, trying to uh, trying to sit down and do some work. So I'm like, okay, sound. So I write down all the numbers for the car because they weren't open of an evening yeah. at BMW. And then I spoke to Apple on the phone, got your phone working. I thought, oh, sound, that's the last of it. In the morning, you'll be able to sort the car out. Your phone's back working. Done. Don't hear from me dad all morning, which is very unlike you because you phone me like 30 times a day, mm -hmm. if anyone doesn't know. My phone, mm -hmm. my house phone goes at like one o'clock and it was you and you were like, hello, uh, my phone's gone off again. Yeah, well, My look, phone's gone off again. Just a fucking nightmare. I had no car. The car, when I drove back from Crosby to where I live in Walton, I had to go, John, that lived next door to you, you know, kind of like... <laughs> yeah. John and Window Cleaner, he had to give me like low, he give me this fucking big bucket, a steel bucket full of water. He keeps going on, have you given them back? No, not yet, I'll give yeah. them back today. And I, I said, John, I can't put that on my passenger seat, it'll spill over. Yeah. So I put it kind of like by the seat under the well, you know, under the dashboard. And, and to be honest with you, I needed it because the time I got to Bootle, all the kind of notices were coming up, do not drive any further, car overheating. So I had to get this jug that your mum gave me, I haven't given her that back. 
fill the fucking radiator because the water was still pissing out, managed to get home. But then the next day, I had to get the garden hose and fill the radiator just to go out to fucking phone you. So I'm in, like, Richie Kelly Drive by where I live. <laughs> yeah. The phone box is smashed to fuck, vandalised, yeah. like you've never seen, sprayed. I didn't even know phone boxes existed. They anymore. still exist. Yeah. All, like, the glasses missing out of it, like something from Blade Runner from the future. So I'm in this fucking phone box with a pound coin trying to ring you to tell you that I can't drive to Crosby and I can't phone you because my phone is still, what am I going to do? I'm just, like, in a terrible panic state. So anyway... So you said to me, I'll go home now, oh, get in touch with nightmare. BMW, see if they can get you to come out. So, At the end of the day, yeah. your phone wasn't even broke, wasn't it? Just the charger that was broke? Well, what it was, it's just, it wasn't even the charger. <laughs> go on. I'd let it run down to zero, but, and I hadn't put it back on charge, and I just thought it was broke again. <laughs> <laughs> no way. So, look, anyway, let's talk about something else. The car's okay. I mean, phone's okay. Right, so a bit of a disaster week. On the note of a disaster week, not to keep things on a negative tone, but Ugh. if anyone's watched some of the vlogs, when we went to Maidstone and when we went to Norwich, you will know who our driver is on a regular basis. Well, and, this is uh, your George. He's, he's a great fella. His name's George Wermold. Shout out to George. Tell everyone what happens with George. George Will Wermold is a great friend of mine, as is Billy Wermold, his mate. And his all brother, the lads, all the lads. His yeah. mate, sorry, his brother. Yeah. Um and the cracking lads, and George and Billy and all the lads in Crosby, they've always been big fans of comedians. Yeah. Not just me. I mean, Joey Blower, Danny Downing, Jimmy Carroll, they used to go everywhere to watch all the comics wherever they were working. They love comedy. So that's how I got to know George. He was coming to some of the shows. But he's a good mate of mine, and we all go out on a Tuesday night now for something to eat in Crosby. Now, just showing you what a terrible week it's been, George is very good. Kind of like as a gardener, a painter, odd job man, bit of a mechanic. He can do anything and everything. And uh, yesterday, you know, this is like right in the middle of my car being fucking blown up. No, you'd sorted it then, and then you came up to no, ours. No, the car yesterday. The car wasn't. Oh, the car was, the car was in repair though. It was in repair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is involved. This is right, right in the middle of all the crap I was going through yeah, with yeah. the phone and the car. Yeah. When I got my phone back, I phoned George because he'd rang me. And I phoned him and said, George. And I thought it was a joke. I said, George, how's it going? And he went, I've cut my fingers off. <laughs> so I said, what? And I thought it was a joke. Yeah. George is always sending me jokes. Yeah. And he's always winding me up. So I said, what do you mean, George? He said, I've cut my fingers off with a buzzsaw. I said, what for? He said, no, he said it was still on. I didn't realise. I'm working on this house in Formby. Fucking I picked no. it up. It hadn't actually cut What's his... a buzz saw? It's just, what is it? It's kind of like for, for, for cutting through a tree trunk. You know, like going like round and round. Tree trunk. Okay. A tree. You know, like, oh, then like that. Looking... Oh, my word. Yeah. Hold on. So we've got a picture of a buzz saw up here. I'm sure uh, Ben or Jacob will be able to put this up on the screen. When you're watching this, fucking horrible, so a fucking yeah. horrible big thing. So okay, what was he doing in form? He was what? doing this hedge or something, and I think he was cutting through this tree trunk. Needed a buzz saw, which, to be honest with you, a terribly powerful tool, That's horrible, terribly man. sharp, oh, was right no through sense. a tree trunk, and it was still on going round, and he didn't realise. And he put his hand on the hedge just to support himself, and he put his hand right through the fucking bus. Oh, so it took the tip of the, of his finger off or half his finger on one hand and the other hand, it like went through and one, one finger and he, he's got like stitches in one hand and the other one, he's lost the tip of the finger that he couldn't reattach it. So he had a terrible time. So I went to see him yesterday afternoon and he's got this fucking big hand, looks like an American baseball player you know, all wrapped up in mad bandages and everything. His other hand's okay. So just shows you what can happen in he a He was week. so chilled, though. He phoned up, right? And he was like, my dad was like, are you okay, George? Like, what? Like, what's happening with your hands? And he's like, it's all right, Frank. Uh, they've attached, reattached two of them, so they'll be okay. But I've lost star for one of them. And, you know, it's all right. And then, and then you said, are you still okay to do the wallpaper? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> And he's doing he's a, yeah. in your house. He said, yeah. George, as you say, is very chilled. 
and he's got a good sense of humour. Imagine if you'd lost a fucking finger this week. If I would have lost a finger on a bus saw, George said there was blood everywhere, I would be dead right now. <laughs> Why? Because I would never have made it to the hospital in case he wanted to operate on me. So I would have tried to stop the bleeding myself, but oh. it wouldn't have worked. I would have just died. That's fucking Because I'm right. terrified of hospitals that's, and operations. That's out of Flying right. and stuff like that. So George is so cool. There's gallons of blood everywhere. And he just drove himself into a walking centre. Oh, and they no went, thanks. what? What are you doing here? Go to hospital straight away. <laughs> so he goes home, gets his beard to take him to the hospital. Then he waits with his thing on, sees the doctor, he stitched one. And by the time he got to the fucking hospital, the doctor said, we can't put the other part of your finger back on. No way. So he's left with this fucking stump. Uh, both of them were hanging off, weren't Both were hanging off. But he, he, he's he got uh, a good sense of humour, George. Because I was sending him things last night. Um, George, this is your uh, birthday present, a three-fingered glove. Okay, <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but he thought it was hilarious. He's got a... <laughs> George has really got a good sense. Yeah. He was laughing his fucking head off. And, uh, and I was saying to him, I know what time you're going to bed tonight uh, when the big hand touches the little hand and all that. And he was just hilarious. He thinks it's hilarious, but he was in a lot of pain with it. Fucking hell, is it, when you went round, what was he like? Like, was he chilled or? He was okay, you could see he was a bit shocked. Yeah. But his hand was like a huge mad bandage on. Um, he looked like Mickey Mouse, one of his hands, the other, house not, the other hand was normal size. And he's got to go back to hospitals to get it redressed on Monday. He's on antibiotics and they gave him an injection for, um, what's that, uh, tetanus? Okay. Oh, because he cut it on. Because it's on metal. You can oh. get locked jaw. What do you mean, locked jaw? Well, locked jaw is your jaw, just like literally locks. You can't eat. You can't do anything. It's what? a symptom because of tetanus. Weird, that. Isn't it? So you could have been walking round like that, like Frankie, uh, uh, with one hand, with no fingers. He could have been walking around like, uh, give me the wallpaper. I'm trying to the wallpaper off. I'll help you get the car. Your phone's not working. Just a nightmare week. Nice one. So hopefully this week's going to get a little bit more positive because we are back working. We are out on Father's Day, which is going to be at Grand Central Hall in Liverpool. It's all sold out. So by the time you're watching this, the show will have passed anyway. But you wouldn't be able to get tickets because people will be scrambling to get a ticket and I'm scrambling to get guest list seats. And Jacob, who runs the podcast studio, he is coming along. It's going to be a belter. And uh, Frank, just to describe to anyone... There might be people in the UK, like, Father's Day, like, what's yeah. the big deal? Liverpool is traditionally, like, it's a big thing, isn't it, in Liverpool? Yeah, it's like a, a lot of different places in the UK seem to celebrate different holidays or different festivals, different kind of, like, anniversaries, whatever, differently. In Liverpool, Mother's Day and Father's Day are kind of huge. Huge events. Absolutely huge. Mm. Bigger, really, than any other city, like, I would say. in any other city, yeah. they probably have a few drinks for St. George's Day. Yeah. No one would give a fuck in Liverpool. Nobody and that, cares. And, that, and that's nothing to, you know, that's no disrespect to anyone who does that. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm as patriotic yeah. as they come. But in Liverpool, like, well, you know, they is, wouldn't be asked. I mean, it's all kind of like about history, politics and whatever. Mm. But you're dead right. I mean... I've done hundreds of shows in Manchester <laughs> yeah. on St. George's Day. Okay. On a Monday, even if it fell on a Thursday. Yeah. And uh, pubs are heaving, people are out all day, Union Jacks everywhere. You know, I'm on, you have a group on, and I have something to eat. It's like New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On St. George's yeah, Day. Yeah. A lot of other cities are the same around the UK. I know Nottingham's big on St. George's Day, Newcastle and whatever. In Liverpool, on Merseyside, it's just a normal day. Nobody gives a fuck about St. George. <laughs> yeah. Only because they do kind of see themselves as maybe, difficult to explain really, as like the Basques in Spain or the Catalonia, the Catalans, they see themselves not really English. A lot of people in Liverpool don't consider themselves British. They scouse before they're anything else. Yo, this is a way own, like, just to give you an idea of got that. got their own identity. Just to give you an idea of how kind of prevalent that is in Liverpool. Now, I know that everyone who listens or watches this podcast 
not that many of you are, are, are Liverpool based, you know, yeah. you're all over the UK and we travel that much of the UK that we understand that, you know, people are just the same everywhere, basically. And we've got a good, you know, audience. So uh, very, very similar type of people. People aren't that much different, are they all over the UK, really? There's a lot of places which are very similar. Yeah. But it's got its own identity. It's very kind of like family oriented, very kind of like old Irish, I think it comes from. Yeah. Whereas Mother's Day, your mother is sacred. You know, somebody could tell jokes, like you'd probably go down to Birmingham and someone <laughs> yeah. could tell a joke about your mother yeah. or say something disrespectful, saying, yeah, like your fucking mother. <laughs> yeah. If you said to someone in Liverpool, yeah, she was ugly, like your mum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The next thing you wake up, you, you would be in hospital. A scouser would not take anything. What do you say about his ma, lads? Yeah, about your mother. That's like yeah. sacred. I mean, yeah. even, and this is a true story. Go ahead. I could tell this story. Uh, the comedian who's a TV comic. Yeah. Um, he was on doing a show in Blackpool at the Floral Hall a few years ago. Now, I'm not telling lies or exaggerating. This is actually verified. It was in the papers. And somebody was telling me, I pissed myself about this story <laughs> yeah. because I realised straight away why he reacted the way he did. Okay. Now, he's a TV comedian. He's on his own show. Best of luck to him. <laughs> yeah. Believe he's a good lad. So he comes on and he's telling gags on the floral hall. Yeah. And he goes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm kind of like involved with the BBC. A lot of people don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Does anybody want to ask me any questions? So... A fella put his hand up and said, yes, can you tell me, is the makeup department part of the BBC? Or, and he's going, no, no, well, it's an independent. They come in and I don't really wear a lot of makeup. And then somebody else puts their hand up. Yes, I have another question. What's your question? Yes, my question is, does the television make you look heavier? Do you feel as though you look fatter on TV because you look slimmer to me in real life? And there was a couple of scousers in there. So a fella put his hand up and he said, yeah, what's your question? And the fella said, my question is this, where's your ma? <laughs> Go ahead. What happened? So he said, sorry. He said, where's your ma, mate? Where's your ma? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> just lost it. Okay. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> Get outside. I'll kill you. Now, I, I, I'm not kind of like saying that's that was his fault. Yeah. Because is that definitely true? That's definitely true. Okay. You can check it out in the newspaper. You can sue me for I'm not telling lies. This is what happened. Somebody told me that was there, and he walked off, and it's verified. It was in Southport. It's on the Southport Theatre. But it's not because has got a lower threshold than any other comic in the UK. It's because. You couldn't have said the worst thing to a scouser. Okay. I would have reacted the same way. Anybody mention your mother and you go into this like thing where, you know, you just want to kill someone if they disrespected your mother. Well, so as you said, so, it's very family oriented. So that's what I'm saying. Very family oriented. You can't insult a scouser's mother. Yeah. And Mother's Day and Father's Day is a huge thing in Liverpool. You know, people, they're very kind of like um, emotional scousers. They'll reminisce about when me mum and me dad were alive and the cemeteries are heaving on Father's Day. Yeah. People are going up there leaving flowers. Then they go drinking in the afternoon, you know, trying to remember how things were. <laughs> Excuse me. So that's why, I mean, obviously we've worked all over the UK. And although there are, you know, people, I'm not saying being disrespectful for people in different parts of the country, they will celebrate Mother's Day, you know, in their own way, probably like send a card to the mother. But if your mother's alive in Liverpool, you've got to drag it out at 10 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and drink with her all day. Yeah. And then what they do, when it gets to the night time, everyone's rotten drunk mm. with your mother. Then they all start crying about the grandmother. I wish yeah. my grandmother was here <laughs> to see. And then nine o'clock, then they're all fighting. Why Why did you always love our Johnny, ignored me when I was a kid? But it's all like this, 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 this like, not incestuous, but like this too close yeah. connection with the mother and father that we've got in Liverpool where they idolise the mother and father and they haven't got it anywhere else. Very peculiar to Liverpool. So Father's Day, as I said, 
might just be an ordinary day. I don't know, really, to be honest. Let us know in the comments all over the UK. In Liverpool, it's a big deal. So we decide yeah. every Father's Day to put a big show on because granddads will come out with the dad, with the sons, with the grandsons. Yeah. Everyone will be there together. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Now, I haven't asked you this yeah. really. Now that the show is fully sold out, we've got guest list spaces that are very limited and most of them are taken up. Yeah. I think I've got about six left just in my back pocket just in case anyone starts like harassing me for them. Do you think people are just going to... Will they be exploding your phone last minute trying to get in? I'm not sure. A lot of people haven't got my number. <laughs> no, what I mean is, isn't don't you think everyone will be trying to get on it last minute? As you say, Father's Day in Liverpool and Mother's Day, it's kind of like, uh, going to be like, uh, what's the word? One of those disaster movies like the end of the world where you're in Los Angeles, like an earthquake. People have got to get somewhere on Father's yeah. Day. No, everyone's got to get somewhere on Mother's Day. going to see Frankie on Father's Day, lad. That's all the talk's going to be over last, the next three even days. Even if you remember last year, 18 Go months on. ago, when the, um, the, the restrictions first came in over the coronavirus, they came in the day before Mother's Day, didn't they? Do you remember that? No, the day after Mother's Day, didn't he? Because we we had mates who had no, the... because a lot of people, if you remember, and he oh, won't sorry, mind me they saying, came in the day. You're yeah. talking about Jack Ryan, Jack yeah. Ryan, and people were going in Liverpool. Everyone was going fuck off. They can fuck off. I'm working on Mother's Day as <laughs> yeah. though it was their God given right to work on Mother's Day, and yeah. the people said they won't stop me going out on Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though it's a national restriction, <laughs> yeah. everywhere else in the country, yeah. everyone just stayed at home and maybe FaceTime the mother. In Liverpool, they were all dragging the mothers out at nine o'clock in the morning <laughs> to drink with them. And, like, and you know, I'm, I'm with my mum for Mother's Day, yeah. So, I mean, it is it's a strange thing. I mean, even with me and you, if it was you, I mean, I'm no different to any other scouser. If you said I'm going away next week, to Spain with me bird. I went, all right, you went. Now, if you don't ring me on Father's Day mm. and I don't hear from you at all, yeah. if you come home next Thursday and phone me up and you went, hello, I'd go, fuck off. <laughs> I know what you're saying. I know because you're saying. you didn't. Basically what you're saying. You missed Father's Day. It's like a big so deal. it's a huge thing uh, to Scousers. It's a huge thing. So we put the show on. Show is going to be sold out. It's going to be amazing. We've been talking about how we think it's going to be chalk and cheese to what the Blackpool show was. Any reason behind that? Yeah, well, the Blackpool show all went down very well because we hadn't worked for 15 months or whatever. I'm not sure it's saying we were rusty. I mean, I was all over the place, but Jimmy Kilver was great and you were great and I was great. But the culture in Blackpool is a drink culture, a big drinking culture. A lot of the people have been drinking all day. Now, if you drink all day, that changes your persona, changes your mood. So as soon as we went out on stage in Blackpool, we had people heckling us. Yeah, totally. You got it straight away and you were MC and Kilvo got it, Jimmy Kilvo, you went south. People, when I went south, in the end, I had to get a fella thrown out. Incessant heckling, wouldn't stop, shouting fuck off, say something funny, just a dickhead, and we got him lashed out. I mean, at the end of the day... I'll go toe to toe, and I've said this a thousand times with anyone heckling me. I invite hecklers. Anybody who wants to heckle me on Sunday, great, because I'll just ruin you, I'll destroy you. But if you're just sitting there like a, a, a dickhead, shouting, <laughs> fuck off, fuck off, say something funny, fuck off, I mean, doesn't make sense. So I got this guy thrown out. I mean, he was a little, like an ugly little twat he was. With like, <laughs> Do you will have heard all of this on, and watched it on the last podcast? So yeah, but it's the same thing, yeah. yeah it was just If anyone hasn't watched it, I've got him thrown out. He maybe has said something about he had a little neck, he's got no neck, maybe took it to heart, and in the second half, he really went to town shouting out, so we got him thrown out. But I'm not expecting the same thing. On Mother's Day, you're going to get a totally different Why do you keep atmosphere. calling it Mother's Day? It's Father's Day? Father's Day, I yeah. should say. On Father's Day this weekend, it's got to be a completely different atmosphere. And what do you think it's going to be like? Well, people are in a good mood. Yeah. They're not aggressive. And because it's a nighttime show and it's a ticket show, people will be at home probably in the afternoon, maybe go out for a couple of hours, but come back home to get ready to go out. So they're not going to be drinking all afternoon and all night. One of the things I thought was making it an afternoon show, and then I come to the conclusion that if we make it an afternoon show, we're going to get people who go out dead early and just get pissed and go to the show. Whereas if we make it an evening show, yeah. it's going to be probably a bit more relaxed. You agree with me on that? 
Well, yeah, and you're going to get but more respect doing it in the evening. You'll get people who won't go out in the afternoon because they're going out at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people making like proper did, events. I mean, we've done a show, did me, in the afternoon a couple of years, last year, a couple did, of years ago. Don't think we did, you know. The RNA. Oh, 2018. Yeah, yeah, a couple of years ago. So we did that. It was in the afternoon. It was a great afternoon and hundreds of people, but a little tiny bit rowdy because people have been drinking since the morning. But that's a, that was a proper Liverpool kind oh, of Oh, that was kind of like, you could have made a documentary in the crowd about Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? They were like totally a thousand percent sort of bread scousers. Like, I'm going to go out on Sunday and say, who's here with the dad, who's here with the granddad, and, and everyone will be cheering because it'll be yeah. like generational thing, which is good. It's yeah. cool for you, isn't it? I mean, I'm not being funny, and this has got to sound like a sick joke. It's not. If you could kind of like, I mean, you'll agree with this. I know you'll laugh. To talking about now putting people in suspended animation when they die and being able to revive them in 20 years or whatever. Mm, yeah. If it costs 30 grand to bring your mother or your father back, if it was 30 grand to bring your father back to life for four hours, <laughs> yeah, you'd see on Sunday a lot of like, like dead bodies, like something <laughs> off the thriller video like Michael Jackson's video you see people like that and people like that yeah they paid 30 grand it's worth it and it brought me dad out for, for father's day here he is a fellow like that oh how's it going <laughs> he's got to go back to the cemetery at seven yeah. oh. you know like dad that the smell that smells it's just a little smell it'd be dead. 10 years ago, like that, like that, like a skeleton. Be like, that's they would do that. Why do you, why do you, why do you, why, why, why do you think it's so different in, in that way? Like, like from, from other places, you think it's because kind of like it, it's very uh, insular as a place, or well, it's just all based on respect. Because no matter what kind of a home life people have had growing up, if the father was no good or if he was drunk or whatever, always taught by the mothers, really, to respect the father. So, your father was like this massive figure in your life to taught you everything, you know, more so than the school. Don't forget, you know, a lot of places in the UK, especially down south or whatever, kids go away to board in school and things, don't they? Yeah. Away from the parents. You'd never get that here. Got you. You know, people are hands-on with the dads, you know, they're a bit of trouble in school. The fathers are going up to the school fighting for them. The, the fathers are kind of like, um, you know, advising them and teaching them every little thing about their life and they get very, people get very close to the fathers. That's all it is. Fair enough. So we'll be celebrating Father's Day together on stage and it's going to be a good one, isn't it? Yeah, it's got to be great. I mean, don't get me wrong, they do. You know, people have got a lot of respect for the fathers out of town, different places, but it is different here. It's, it's very different. Same as like in Ireland and that, or maybe Glasgow. I'm and not sure places. how it is in Ireland. I mean, you get a lot of places, don't you? What people forget is when you get people from different cities and different towns and different countries all mixing together, you get evolving a separate identity where the people, you know, you couldn't say people in Liverpool were very Irish. You couldn't say they were very English. You couldn't say they were very kind of Scottish or you couldn't say they were very kind of like West African or Chinese, a lot of Chinese here or foreign, whatever. Their own identity has evolved. That's interesting. It's like the first settlers that went to America yeah. were all English and Irish. Now, even now, 400 years later, they all speak English. But you couldn't say they were English. They're very different. They're American. Okay. So they've got their own identity because of immigration, because of all people intermarrying and different races of people intermarrying. And because of where they live, the environment or whatever, a different identity has evolved and, uh, you know, I've got my own doctor who's kind of like uh, ethnically Chinese, but he's isn't, a crazy isn't, Liverpool fan. Isn't um, as a Liverpool got, oh, by the way, shout out to Gin. Gin wanted me to give him a shout out on today. Gin's Chinese by birth, and he? Oh, well, no, he's from, he's from, he's born in Liverpool, sorry. That's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't matter. It doesn't seem to matter in Liverpool what ethnicity you are. Yeah. Where it might matter a little bit more kind of like, out of town in different places. We've got people here, you know, for, descended from people from West Africa, from the Caribbean. We've got people descended from Chinese. It's just that Isn't Irish, it the, it's the largest Scottish, uh, Chinese population in Europe? It's the oldest like Chinese community yeah. okay. in Europe. They've been here for hundreds of years. Maybe that's one of the reasons. But people kind of like, 
no matter what ethnicity they are, they regard themselves as scouser, as scousers before anything else, and they behave like scousers. So funny that, right? So I don't know if I've told anyone this story before, but my mate, uh, Joe, and my dad will tell you this, he's from like a posh part of Cheshire outside Manchester, and he's very kind of like not streetwise, and he'd admit yeah. that himself. Yeah. He, would you call him posh? Yes. Yeah, okay. So A little bit. So he comes down, like, it's a Liverpool, and he's got no clue about this whatsoever, right? I think it was, like, the first year that he'd moved down to Liverpool. And, like, we were watching the uh, the England match against Uruguay. Yeah. And, like, there's, there's, like, 10 minutes left of the match or whatever, and Joe's, like, obviously very patriotic, brought up, you know, uh, in Manchester, or yeah. just outside Manchester, really, really wanting England to win, desperate for England to win. Like, I'd be desperate oh. for Liverpool to win. Next minute, Uruguay scores. Luis Suarez, mm. 10 minutes to go, scores past England. This scouser just shouts out, yes! <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So Joe, my mate, goes, Will, Will, is, is that guy there, is he from Uruguay? And I was like... <laughs> I was like, no, no, yeah. he's not. You don't think he's from Uruguay, mate? I think he's a scouser. He was like, well, what the fuck's he cheering? What's he cheering for Uruguay for? So I said, Joe, leave it, mate. It's it's like not a big deal. But he was so upset about the score that Joe goes, excuse me, mate, excuse me, mate. Are you are you Uruguayan? And the guy goes, no, lad, I'm a scouser. And Joe goes, well, but you've just cheered for Uruguay. They're beating England. They, they've just scored. And he goes, lads, I don't support England. I support Suarez. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe is like, uh, sorry, lad, I don't get what you mean. I don't get what you So he was all confused, like yeah, baffled, yeah. like looking at me. And like, he was like very offended by it. And I said, Joe, that's just the way some people here are. Well. <laughs> I said, he genuinely, you know. I've got a better one Go on. than that for you. This is going back about 20 years. I was up my mate, Alan. He was running a club in Bersco. I won't mention the name of the clubs or whatever, but he was running the social club. Yeah. He always had me on there. And I went up with a mate of mine, Tommy. And Tommy was a good lad. Mm. And uh, he was a good-looking lad, Tommy Dark. And he always wore these Hawaiian shirts. So this Davy guy that we knew had lived in Bersco, which is Ormskirk, mm -hmm. for 25 years Although he was a scout and he was like us, his best mate, who was his best man at his wedding that he was always with, was like Lancashire lad, you know, I start like that. And he was what what you like a woolly back. Yeah. And he was his best mate. So we're in this club and we're having a drink, and it was a ladies' night. There was two male strippers on, I was on, loads of birds there. Yeah. So Tommy saw this bird. And this bird, he saw this bird. Next thing is Tommy's necking this bird and he's got <laughs> hold of it. Yeah. And he's got it in the corner and all that. And so this Davy guy that's with me and his mate, Alan, who's like his best mate, best mate at his wedding and all that, he saw him with his beard and he started kicking off. And I jumped up and I said, what Tommy... he started kicking off? Well, you'd kick off if you saw someone kissing your beard. Oh, sorry, he was necking his beard. Tommy, my mate, was necking this fella's beard. Okay. It was the fella from Bearsco, <laughs> but he's a Lancashire fella. Yeah. His best mate was Davy. He was a scouser, but he'd lived in Bearsco for 25 okay, years. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he didn't know Tommy and he hardly knew me. Yeah. So the fellow from Bearsco kicks off and goes over to Tommy and goes, What are you doing? What are you doing? The next thing, Davey runs over, grabs him by the throat and goes, Take it easy. <laughs> Fuck off. And all that. Yeah. So he goes on with his beard. So we're all talking at the bar. So I said, Davey, I thought that was your best mate, the best mate of your wedding. He went, yeah. I said, what's going on? I said, you ran over because you thought he was going to hit Tommy and you grabbed him and you were ready to hit him because he was threatening Tommy, but you don't know Tommy. And he went, oh, no. So I said, why did you do that? He went, don't know. He went, like, one of the boys, isn't he? Tommy, and he was Tommy, like, like, he said, but he's your best mate. He said, he's a wolf. Fucking so hell. I said, what? He went, he's woolly back. I went, yeah, but I thought you'd known him for 20, but you don't know Tommy. And he went, I don't know, I don't know why I've done it. Just like, just went like that, there's Tommy. And all that. Just talking to Tommy, he's like, 
Then it like just because she liked him coming over, it's like a wolf. So she grabbed him. <laughs> Fucking hell. And that's his best mate. That's his best mate. So that 25 years of friendship counted for nothing mm. because he suddenly reverted back to being a scouser. Madness. It's crazy, isn't it? Madness. It is. I mean, I, look, I love it. it's believable. I love it's Liverpool believable. more than anywhere in the yeah. world. I think it's an amazing place with amazing people, but it is fascinating how different it is. People to, think to very differently. I remember being in Manchester once and something had happened. I'm not going to say what it was. And we're just sitting around this table and talking to these lads. And somebody close to me had had a bit of trouble, whatever. Somebody had, had hit them, and, you know, get somebody I know a good eye. And, and this fella said to me, uh, oh, he said, I'm sorry to hear that, Frank. Are you going to take legal action against them? <laughs> so I went, uh... No. And he went, they were all looking at me. This other fellow went, oh, hang on a minute, he said. Burnley it was up in Burnley. Mm. He went, hang on a minute, Frank. Surely you're not considering further violence. <laughs> Fucking mad, well, isn't it? That's just the way they think compared to the way Scousers react to things. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know whether they, whether we might be overthinking this and over exaggerating it because we think that you know liverpool is very very different to everywhere else in the uk or is that the case let us know in the comments you tell us what you think they are very different they've got a very kind of like uh, they react very differently to things um you know as you say you can't mention anyone's mother you can't mention anyone's family and people are prepared you know They'll die for a family in Liverpool. They live by the sword and they die by the sword. Things are different in different areas. Obviously, there's worse places for crime. There's probably more violent places, but they, they've got, what I'm trying to say is they've got their own identity and they've got their own way of thinking. Yeah. You know, they've got their own kind of like, um, what's the word? Philosophy on life and they've got their own way of dealing with things. Interesting. Mm. It is fascinating when you look at it that way. So fill us in, has your week been really that bad? Have you had an unlucky week? Or had an is it turning week, a corner? But it's because turning out to be okay. Go on, any good because, stuff happening? Yeah, there's some great stuff happening, as I say. Got my car back. Fantastic. They fixed. All the problems were fixed. Why I was in such a state the other night, when we got the car, you know, I thought the warranty had run out, but it hadn't run out. So all the work that's been done on my car, the engine, the radiator, all that, all been done, never cost me a penny. And obviously we're all still being careful because although we've had a couple of jobs, 19th of July is the date when we can work again. So we're off for a few weeks now. So you've just got to be careful. Everyone in the UK got to be careful what they spend, expenditure. Oh, 100%. I mean, this podcast is probably going to go up miles after uh, the date. You know, if, you, if you're listening to this or watching it now, this podcast is recorded. To just after the announcement that Boris made where he said that things are going to be pushed back again. But I don't think we were fucking... I think we were cynical enough to, to not think that everything was going to reopen again anyway. Look, I mean, I'm fuming really with Boris Johnson. I was always a big Boris Johnson fan. It's very true what uh, John Ashworth said, who was the Labour MP. Instead of putting India... On the red list, they gave India the red carpet. 20,000 people came in. A lot of them must have been carrying the variants. So 97% of the people in the UK that have got coronavirus have got the Indian variant. Mad so that. if they would have closed the borders down, the Indian variant wouldn't have been here. We would have had 3% of the people in the UK would have had coronavirus. Nothing it would have been gone. To, to be honest with you, I mean, sorry, guys. I don't... I just... Sorry, guys, what am I talking about? I'm like a fucking, you know, like a Disney presenter. <laughs> what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, look, and I know we, we speak about the fucking coronavirus every bloody episode. I know it's all we can speak about at the moment, but we may as well just fuck it off, innit? Let's talk about something more positive. Yeah, okay. Show on Sunday, things are turning the corner for us. Really positive. I've just seen, I've just been in the coffee shop there doing some work with me, mate. You were sat outside. I saw about four people stopping you, so... Onwards and upwards on on that trajectory. When I say four people stopping you, what were they stopping you for? Recognise you or something? Um, just recognise me, how are you doing? And a lot of people, it's great really because when people recognise you, you speak to people, it's great, you know, communication. I always say to people, 
where are you going? What are you up to? We're just met a friend of mine and you his dad and great. And uh, the Frankie Allen things give you kind of like uh, a bit of latitude, you know, it allows you to speak to people that you would normally not have spoken to. Do you mean everyone's... it brings, it makes strangers more likely to talk to you? Yeah, because people who just walk past you will give you the thumbs up and say, how are you doing? And, and, and you know, it's great. And you love talking I to I love speaking anyway. to people, yeah. Have you always been like that? Yeah, I've always been... Uh, well, you're quite shy, aren't you, really? I am off stage, but I do like speaking to people, yeah. So let me just like, run through like a normal dialogue. Someone will walk past, do they give you a nod, and do you know, if someone recognises you, do yeah. you know straight away, ah, he's on to me, or do you kind of like jump the gun on it? Sometimes I can tell straight away if they know me, you know, if they know me as Frankie Allen, because they go, hey, all right, how are you doing? And then they'll stop. Okay. Then I'll just say to them, yeah, you know, we're working again soon. And then they'll say, yeah, Frankie, can we have a picture? Or they'll just say, yeah, you know, or they might just want to talk and say, well, look, when's your next show? And I've been watching you, been following you. Just have a conversation, yeah. Decent. Okay, so anything else going on this weekend? Fill us um, in. No, obviously, big night tonight. England, excuse me, England against Scotland. I know, this is going to be old news by the time this goes out. So it's going to be old news. You don't know who's going to win. <laughs> I mean... Just, just out of curiosity, then who do you yeah. think is going to win? I hope Scotland win. Okay. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Why? Uh, listen, <laughs> this is what everybody forgets. Scotland is in the UK. Okay. So it doesn't matter who wins, does it? Are you, so you don't hope that Scotland win, or you? No, to be honest with you, I don't mind if Scotland win. I'm an England fan, but I don't mind if Scotland win. I don't like Gareth Southgate. Well, what's, why don't you like him? I don't like his beard. It's a bit like a teacher kind of vibe. Yeah. He's kind of too serious for me. Yeah. And really, and the thing is, I'll be honest with you, I'll tell you what, he thinks he's great and he thinks England are great the way he talks about them. I'm fucking crap. You think so? Yeah, he's going, they've beaten everyone 1-0. They haven't played anyone who's any good. They played so, Croatia. Croatia were quite decent. Yeah, uh, no, well. Listen, well, by the look, time this goes out, they might have won the Euros. They won't win know. the Euros. If they win the Euros. They'll get beat by Scotland. They won't win the Euros. The crap he uses different players all the time. He doesn't know what he's doing. Remember the penalty he missed when he was playing? <laughs> yeah. He, still he couldn't even it. fucking kick the ball into the goal. And now he thinks he's big time. Now he thinks he's fucking like Jürgen Klopp. He's standing there going, yes, um, I think uh, what we'll do, we'll have back four. And like, Fuck, it's fucking rubbish, mate. He's going to get beat. You're not asked how funny though you are, you? I'm not really bothered. If England got beat 20 nil, I mean, what does it do for me? It doesn't give me any money, does it? It doesn't do nothing for me. Have you always thought that way? Have you ever, uh, ever been asked about footy? That reminds like me of, have you ever seen that scene in the Bronx tale and the, the young lad comes in and he has a, pick, a playing card of Babe Ruth? Oh, Babe Ruth, yeah. Yeah, and he goes, oh, is that your favourite player? Is it Babe Ruth? Is that your favourite baseball player? And he goes, yeah. He goes, do you like Babe Ruth? And he, oh, Mickey Mantle. Oh, Mickey Mantle, yeah. Mickey Mantle wouldn't pay my rent. What's he do for you? That's the oh, that's Mickey true. Mandel. I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, I like Liverpool, support Liverpool because I'm a scouser. If Liverpool yeah. win, great. But doesn't do anything for you. All those players, the supporters that go, they're kind of chasing a dream, really. None of those Liverpool first team players, if they were homeless, I'd give them like 100 grand to buy a house, would they? That's true. You know, so everything's just out for themselves, look. That's the way it is these days. And really, how football started out, which the, the idea was players from a certain city, you were brought up in that city, you know, in the 60s and 70s, most of the players, the local players, played for the team. But now, you know, people from all over the world can play for a certain team. It's just a thing, you know, where people follow... Oh, follow Man United, I'm a Spurs fan. It's just a, what is it? Not your bag. It's not, I'm not into it. Right, nice one. We've got 10 minutes left, so I want some positivity from you. I've had loads of messages over the last few weeks that have been saying that you <sighs> and me and you are gentlemen, apparently, which is a great shout. And if you want to call this gentleman, feel free to in the comments. But everyone's been saying Frankie specifically yeah. has been dragging them out of depression Putting the smile on the face. I don't know fucking why, because he well, does the opposite why, to me. I don't know why, because all the stories I, well, all the stories I yeah. tell are quite depressive. Yeah. So how the fuck am I depressing? Unless they feel sorry for me, because what's <laughs> happened with my car and the fucking phone? Yeah. I can't understand it. You know, I'm telling like doom and gloom stories every week, <laughs> and people are saying, Frankie, 
You stopped me from taking my own life. It's fantastic. <laughs> what the fuck? How am I doing that? Because I'm like a manic depressive anyway. Yeah. So have you got anything to say to people if they are feeling down and all that? Look, like me, just take one day at a time. Everyone that's watching this, everyone that's in this room has got like problems. Everyone's got problems. It's just the way of the world. Mm. But I always say to people, communicate, speak to your mates. If you live alone, speak to the fucking postman or somebody that comes around, even if it's the bin men, speak to anybody, get a conversation going and it will make you feel better. Communication is the key to good mental health. That's a great shout. It is. You've got to speak to people. If you bottle things in, that's what's dangerous. And you can speak to people. You know, you might say to people, you know, I've got this thing. Um, you might have a thing where whatever it is, we don't know. You know, going like to an extreme, you might be like, there was a thing on the television, these people do it like attracted to cars. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've seen that. It's proper funny. It's crazy. Go ahead. And this this, this fellow was like that. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm attracted to a car. Yeah. And you go, fucking hell. But imagine if you bottled all that up and you went, I'm insane. I'm off my fucking head. <laughs> yeah. I'm attracted to cars. Yeah, but I don't think people who's, who, who, who are fancying cars are going to tell many people, are they? No, but if they did, you might get someone go like that. You're fucking joking, are you? Listen. I fell in love with this fucking like Ford Mustang. Um, oh yeah, I just dream about the foot every fucking night. Ah, oh, what was it? What was happening on the car program? I don't know. It's like this other girl came on, and she was attracted to to the, the Berlin Wall, <laughs> and she was she was going a lot. She was going to, flying to Germany all the time, and like she was going to the, the Berlin Wall. <laughs> And she was like standing by the wall. She's going, ha, ha, the bell of wall, ha. No way. Getting there for like having an orgasm about this fucking wall. <laughs> What's all that about? But what I'm saying is even people like that, you might find someone else that's, you know, like you, you might be attracted to the bell wall. You might get like someone who's attracted to like your fucking somebody backyard wall or something. So you might be able to get it together. That's all I'm saying. Communication is the key. I agree. I've been using the sauna. Not in any kind of weird way. Don't be coming at me saying, fucking hell, Will, you've been hanging around saunas and that. Uh, well, this is what <laughs> but you I've, been, you, I've, you I've been using the sauna as my way of communicating with people. Listen, I know this is going to go bad in the comments, so you can yeah. fuck off. But what I'm saying is, what you know, it's a good way to, to, to interact with people, just with interact with strangers, because people are in there and they're just up for the chat. Randomly bumped into one of your mates, purely by accident. I know we were talking about serendipity and yeah. synchronicity in the previous podcast. And they uh, randomly just bumped into one of your mates and had a full combo with him without knowing he was your mate from Manchester as well. Well, that was Steve Foster. Steve Foster, former world champion boxer and great lad. I've known him all my life. Marvellous guy. Do anything for you. And I'm not seeing him for a couple of years. And the next thing you know, you bumped into him in a sauna. Kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah. Sauna in Liverpool. And he's a Salford lad. Lives up in Salford. And uh, he's working on a house in Liverpool. And uh, he just happened to be there. Calls in at the gym. Some mornings, goes in the sauna. You got talking to him. Didn't realise who he was. It just came out in conversation. Strange thing, isn't it? I brought Frankie to the sauna last week. But I don't think it was it was his bag. No, it was okay. I enjoyed it, really. Yeah. It's all right, yeah. Are you going to get back in there? I'll go back in. Yeah. A lot of people recognise me in there. Um, it was fantastic, great, yeah. Okay, sounds. A few quick fire questions before we go, final five minutes. I want to know, what have you eaten today? I I'm am always eat fascinated by yeah. your eating habits. Go on. Okay, I'll tell you what I've eaten today. I've had a bacon sandwich and a coffee. That's it? Nothing else today, not yet. It's four o'clock? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, how are you living? Um, later on, I'll have um, like some chicken. Okay. I don't know how I'm still alive because I, I have got no I idea. Don't eat anything at all. Flipping it. No wonder you're depressed if you've got no blood sugar in you. I know. So I'll eat something probably on the way home. Or oh, do you want to go for something to eat now? I've just eaten. Oh, I've just been up. taken out for lunch, me. You're so lucky. Just been taken out for lunch, chicken thighs and rice. Where I was have. that? A Turkish sausage. Oh my god! What's Don't it? be fucking about saying Turkish sausage and going what's in Turkish saunas. Turkish sausage. Well. <laughs> I just, uh, I just, I just had some Turkish sausage earlier. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, as you say, we've all got problems. I mean, obviously, I'm Frankie Allen, I'm a man, but I identify as a rabbit. So um, I'm going, uh, later on, I'm going to get a salad for me tea, uh, hopefully, and um, you might uh, see me tonight. I'll be, uh, and I, I dress as a rabbit when I'm home, um, and I'll be on the floor, and I'll have a I'll be going like, I, I don't identify as a rabbit. <laughs> That's mad. You're coming on stage on Sunday dressed as a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I am a rabbit sometimes. Yes. Before we go, I've got a few hilarious things that I wanted to. Well, one of By the way, did you see to... that fella? I'm not sure if it was a joke. It was on the internet and he was five foot five. But he said, but I identify as being six foot six. Have you seen oh, it? Oh, fuck off. Yeah. And he was walking around on a tube in London. And he was like, I'm not sure if it was a wind-up. Yeah. And he was getting getting on the tube. And he was like lowering. He was only five foot five anyway. But he was lowering his head right down. Because in his, somewhere in his mind, he thinks he's six six. Yeah, but he was identifying as being six six. Yeah, ident- you know the way they say, some of these people, I identify uh, as a rhino. Mm. He's, he identifies as, as always six foot fucking six. He's Fair. five five. Fair play to him. I don't really get that myself, but whatever. So where are some comedians ask for uh, you know kind of donations to different things? If anybody can send me some carrots, please, <laughs> yeah, and some lettuce, um, or, or some for the winter when the winter months are coming. If you can send me some uh, straw, so I can, I and, and then when it goes to bed, I'll go. <laughs> yes. I identify as a rabbit, and <laughs> during the summer months, I I um I work for Extinction Rebellion. It is rebellion. What's the fuck's Extinction Rebellion? That, uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> Extinction Rebellion uh, against climate change. Because I woke up this morning, it was and it was too cold. I I had a look, and a hundred years ago, it was half a degree warmer. So. I'm going to chain myself to downy sleep railings and need some letters. <laughs> nice one. Any last things to say, Frank, before we shoot? No, just in a funny mood, so I hope everyone's enjoyed everything today. Nice one. Whether you're listening on Spotify, Apple Music, what well, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, whatever, give us a five-star review. We'll read the five-star reviews out, but there isn't that many fucking new ones because you're a gang of type bastards. So give us a fucking five-star review and we'll read it out. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumb up, get yourself subscribed to the channel. And uh, Frank, I've been thinking about changing the name of this podcast, you know. What's who? The Rabbit Podcast. <laughs> it's just a joke, well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, right. Nice one, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, next time we speak to you, we'll have just smashed a sold-out show. And uh, hopefully, Frank, will have had some more stuff to eat. And uh, enjoy, yes, enjoy I will your be carrots. eating today. I will be eating some raisins, some currants. And uh, in my bedroom, I have a little... Uh, it's like a tube, and I go over to it and get water at night. Instead of going downstairs for a glass of water, I go over to it and I go... Right. Nice one. Keep sending your messages in. Keep supporting the channel. Keep supporting the podcast. Uh, And uh, vlogs out very soon, or vlogs probably out now by the time you're listening to or watching this. Any last words? I want you to sign this off. Yeah, everybody, you know, by the time this is watched anyway, we could very well be out of uh, the final phases of the lockdown. But take it easy, everyone, and communicate If you're fed up, if you're depressed, if you're anxious, if you've got problems, speak to your mates, speak to your friends. And uh, communication, as I say, can't stop saying, is the secret of good mental health. Nice one. Appreciate you listening or watching in a bit. See you on the next one, people. Nice one.